Amen. Amen. Tell me, is this what you wanted? I, I don't know. All right. In any case, Austria's Vincent Bueno is singing the song Amen. This compares the, a relationship that's ending to a funeral. He says, Amen, I guess. You said that it's time for us to put our love to rest. Dressed in black, you left my neighborhood. No, I never thought you'd bury me. And you, no, I never thought we'd die. The question is... Are Austria and Vincent Bueno giving you guys life? Should we talk about it? <laughs> Let's, Let's do this! this. Yes, Vincent Bueno is back for Austria. Last year he sang that he was alive, but this year he is experiencing metaphorical death through the song Amen, a folk pop ballad about the end of a relationship. It comes with a very glossy, very artistic music video. Our man can sing, and he is putting those vocals on fine display here. Let's start with Sinan Sadula in Germany. What do you you think? Guten Tag. So honestly, I am not sure if I like the song or if I don't like the song. I'm not sure. It's so uh, strange. It happens to me like never. I normally like the songs, but <clears throat> this one is so different. Maybe because last year it was completely different. I mean, it now it's mid-tempo ballad kind of song, but last year it was, you know, dance and, you know, uh, up-tempo. I think I liked last year's more. I I can say that. But, yeah, let's focus on this one. Um, I think, you know, the message is really important here of what he's singing. I think a lot of people, you know, have been there not wanting to, you know, uh, very, like, perfect relationship to come to an end right but it happens uh and it's sometimes it's out uh, it's for our best even in the dark darkest place you can still find a light so live your life now i think once our once upon a time is now so yeah but i i love vincent i think he's so kind and he's a great artist and I'm, I think that uh, life, maybe he will change my mind and, you know, I will go to the, you know, place that I like this song and not in the middle. <laughs> like now, I'm not sure. I'm sorry. <laughs> Lyrical interlude. I bet it's just another funeral to you. But for me, it's the end. The marching band are playing Gone Too Soon. Suzanne. So <clears throat> I want to piggyback on something that Sinan said about being in the darkness and finding the light. And I just want to share that the Eurovision community and all of my fellow wee wee bloggers are my light. And this all just makes me so happy that I can cry. <laughs> so I'm going to laugh instead. Um, you know, I really, really like this song. I think that there is a great irony in that he's gone from alive to amen, which is essentially about death um and you know my initial take on this was that he was talking about the death and funeral of a relationship because a lot of times when a relationship ends it really does feel <clears throat> like someone has died it does feel like a death there's this whole mourning period that happens and then you just got to say amen thank god it's over hallelujah <laughs> praise jesus sometimes right because when you realize that's not where you need it to be it really is an amen moment but this song is also i, I think it references a lot of the personal tragedy in vincent's life and when i initially listened to the song I was unaware because you all know I'm always the last one to do the research and actually figure out what's going on. And I normally listen to the songs like right before we hop on video, right? <laughs> um, and so for me, I had this moment where I almost felt bad that I compared it to a romantic type of relationship or even a friendship because the end of a friendship can feel like a death too. 
versus, you know, to his personal tragedy. Um, I think that a lot of folks won't know his story and his background as well as others do who actually research the Eurovision artists. And granted, I'm sure he has a a huge following and they know his story, but I think that a lot of people will relate to this song and to them, it will be about the death of a relationship. Um, And so it's just, it's so relatable in so many ways, but I've just got to say, I love this video when it opens up. Vincent has the most beautiful face. Um, and I am a little bit biased towards his look, those high cheekbones, that perfect little round mm-hmm. nose. The, the, the Hold up. Beautiful Can we steps. just clarify? We just need to clarify. In case viewers don't know, Suzanne is half Asian. And I think what you're getting at is you do have, you have a thing. You love Asian features and beauty is kind of what you're getting at. Well, yes. I, I've never been attracted to Asian men because, well, I mean, they kind of look like, well, <laughs> my brother. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so they real cute girl they real cute i do think i mean we all know that william is just a beautiful creature as is vincent bueno however you say his last name right and so anyway i i talk about not knowing maybe what the song meant to him and then he he sent the nicest message or story on instagram thanking Devin and myself for the video and that made me feel so much better because in that moment, I realized that he was not offended by my take on his song, just feeding the fact that Sinan stated earlier that he really is just a lovely human being. Um, and so anyway, lots of meaning to this song. And it, it just it makes me want to cry in so many ways. Um, my heart just, you know, goes goes out there. As everybody knows, William and I had an experience with loss about five years ago. And it's just when you lose a family member, it's tragic. But anyway, okay, go ahead. So just to clarify, in case people are coming to this song late, Vincent told Wee Wee Blogger Ezra in an interview that he wrote this song during the pandemic, difficult time, you know, in itself, but his cousin also was diagnosed with brain cancer, a very difficult time for him. So he wanted to write a song that touched on these issues. You can read it as a love song. You know, that is, you can about the death of a relationship, the lyrics, if you take them literally, that's exactly what it's about. So your interpretation is completely fair, Suzanne. In any case, we move on to Oliver. No, I'm not done. Hold on. I'm, I'm really not done. Oliver. I was ready to say amen. I thought you were done. Yes. No. So one of my favorite things about the song, though, is um, when you've got Vincent's beautiful face, you know, and his body, but, you know, I love the face. You've got him in this. Well, I'm not attracted to Asians. Let me just restate that as I say that. So anyway, you've got Vincent in this white room, right? And it's, there's something very clinical about it. And initially, you see black birds. And at the end of the video, we see this red bird flying away. And black birds symbolize death. They symbolize change. They symbolize mystery. And so that's what's presently going on with the end of this relationship, with this funeral, with, with whatever is happening at hand. And in the end, what we see is a cardinal, a red bird, and then it flies away. And cardinals in the U.S. and Mexico and Canada are one of the most loved and recognized birds in these regions. And they symbolize vitality. They symbolize love and loyalty. And they're considered to be spiritual messengers. And so one of my favorite things about this video really is the birds, how we've got the blackbird symbolizing all that is dark, and then we end with the cardinal, and as it flies away, I just know that as Vincent perceives that he's going to find that love and loyalty and vitality, and it's just such a beautiful ending, and you know, Sinan said he really didn't know how he feels about this song, and he may have liked last year's song better, and I've said that about a lot of songs this year. But despite the fact that this is a love song, I actually love the 2021 song more. Okay, I'm done now. The platform is yours, Oliver. Take it away, friend. Let the church say amen. Okay, (laughs) Um, this is is a strange one for me. I think there's kind of an irony in the fact that last year he sang Alive, which is a song that I really liked. But yet this year, there's seen, there's more feeling. There is more life in this song that's about death. However, the sentiment is a little bit lost on me. I really like the lyrics in the opening. You know, that was captivating. The 
talking about the funeral. But I think he runs with that metaphor for a little bit too long and it just becomes a bit dreary. At the same time, I can completely understand the, you know, the the interview that he did with Esma um, on Wee Wee Blogs, I think really showed the meaning of the song a lot better than you can perhaps understand in that three minutes. But that's a problem, okay? Because because when we're seeing this on stage, we're seeing the music video, we're listening to it on Spotify, whatever it may be, we don't always know that backstory. So if you can't show to me in that snapshot of three minutes, that short window that you've got on the Eurovision stage, everything that the song is about, it's a bit lost on me. Vocally, he nails it. I think there's some really interesting parts to the development of this as well at the end with the bridge. I really like that part. The chorus is just a bit, I don't know. I feel like anybody could have bashed out those lyrics. It sounds like, can I get an amen from season five of RuPaul's Drag Race? I <laughs> I just think that sounds really cheesy. And I, it's just a bit lost on me. I, I'm not <clears throat> responding to it the same way that I would like to. You know what's interesting about amen and <laughs> no, you go ahead, please. You go ahead. The floor is yours. Dear <laughs> sister. Self, darling brother. It came up in the comments on the video that Devin and I did. So, you know, you think of Amen like praise Jesus, hallelujah, right? And it's like, yes, but one of our, you know, followers pointed out that the meaning of Amen, I believe they said, was so be it. Um, and so, you know, just like we bastardized sushi in America with all the sauces and whatnot. <laughs> I know, it's an odd. <laughs> Girl, were you drinking alcohol before this video? I do take, I get your metaphor analogy. Um... <laughs> Hold on. So just like we bastardized sushi in America. With cream cheese and mayo. <laughs> A Philadelphia roll. Spicy mayo. I mean, in Japan, mm. they, they, they eat the raw fish with rice, maybe with not, but just fish. <clears throat> so we bastardize sushi. I kind of feel like the meaning of amen has, has taken on something different also versus so be it. It's like a yes, so be it. Whereas in this song, the meaning really goes back to the very subtle so be it. Okay. That's it all. is written, okay. amen, finality, <laughs> accepting what has happened. Look, you can interpret this however you want. And regardless of how you slice it, I actually love it. This is a top three jury, you know, bait type of song. This is excellent. This is excellent. I was listening to this, trying to find something to say against it. I couldn't think of anything. I actually like the lyrics. I think it really tells a story, and that story can be whatever you want it to be. I think most people will take it as love, the death of a relationship, and that is fine. He's in this house. He's kind of trapped. You could say that's the relationship. He sees the house is falling apart. A blackbird arrives, you know, death, a death nail. He's really worried, and then the house collapses. <clears throat> but guess what? He didn't want it to collapse, but when it did, he was happy. He's, he could breathe again. There was air. And then there was this gorgeous bird of paradise. I didn't see a cardinal. If you look close, this bird is glittery and red. It looks like a toucan made it with a pigeon. The it is magical. Is red. A cardinal is red, but that is a glitter red rainbow bird of paradise mixed you with a pigeon. You want to see the bird of paradise yoga pose? Not really, no. This is a family <laughs> show, and I don't know what you're going to pull. <laughs> over there. Now, Suzanne, you and I are, of course, mixed race Asian, and we <laughs> love the representation here. Shout out to the Philippines, Mabuhay. I love all the global support he's gotten from the Filipino diaspora and from Filipinos in the Philippines. I just, I, oh my God, I just, yeah, I'm surprised at how much I like this, because when it came out, I'm not going to lie, I didn't even watch it. I was like busy at work, and I was like, there was so much going on, so I kind of, it missed me, and I was like, oh, Suzanne, can you watch this? But now that I've watched it, I'm saying amen. I am saying amen. He can sing live, by the way. Didn't he rise to fame on an Austrian show looking for the next big musical theater star? The man has presence. The man can perform. The man can sing. And Austria, as we know... Oh, they're working with Marvin Dietmann, who did Cesar Sampson's jury-winning performance 
in 2018 in Lisbon. This is all conspiring to something very good. This is going to the final, by the way. Let me just say that. There are people who say this, well, they're not going to make it, blah, blah, blah. No, this is going to the final. And y'all better watch out because a men could end up climbing the scoreboard in the final. This is stealth. This is under the radar. That cardinal bird of paradise pigeon is flying under the radar. I'm sorry, that video okay, is artistic. a bird of paradise and a pigeon, those are two different things, dude. Watch the video, girl. This is a hybrid. This is a solar-powered, you know, Tesla next generation bird, okay? I love the song. I love Vincent. I think it's going far. Like, you're definitely going to hear me call out some points in my, you know, my uh, review video or whatever it is I'm working on. Yeah, okay. Now, um, listen, Hunty, we need to move on to round number two. And in this round, <laughs> I want to ask you guys, is this making the final? Let me just tell you, this performs fifth in semifinal two. So you've got San Marino opening, then Estonia, then Czech Republic, then Greece, Stefania, followed by Austria's Vincent Bueno. Then after him, from the class of Vincent, we take a ride to Poland with Rafael and the ride. C9, is Austria going to the final? Probably. Uh, but after Greece, mm, you know, Greece is going to, I think they will make a really, really great performance. Yeah. And after Austria is Poland, which I don't really like the song, but I see that a lot of people like it. And it's, you know, up-tempo. But I think he will go to the final. And I want him to go to the final. So, yeah, I think they will, you know, Marvin Dietmann, he's working with so many countries this year. I think he's very talented. And I think he's also also all Austrian, right? Yeah. So I who's he going to prefer? You know, he's going to help his countrymen, I think. Uh, yeah, probably. Why not? Like, yeah. Um, yeah, I think they will come up with a great staging. So, in live performance, uh, Vincent Bueno, we will jam at home last year. He's late. He's late. Like, so, yeah. Vielen Dank, du bist Sus Suzanne. 100% he's going to the final. <laughs> Short and sweet, Oliver. Period. Yeah, I agree. I agree. This is going to the final. Out of the two songs that are called Amen this year, this <laughs> is absolutely the better one by far. <laughs> Do I respond to it? That's a different question. But I think this will get a lot of people on board, especially if he can nail the staging. <laughs> if he can... so wait, there, are, there are two songs named Amen. Don't we have two artists with the same name too or something this year? Like, isn't there like another duplicate something? Uh, there is. I know. There thank is. you That's for this stirring point. insight, which is not necessarily relevant. <laughs> Oliver, please continue. As I was saying, <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> this is the better of the two amens this year. And if he can get the staging right, if he oh. can create that moment of intimacy, which I'm sure working with the stage director, Marvin Dietman, he absolutely can. I think this is sailing through to the final and could surprise a lot of people, you know, by stealth, it could do quite well. Ooh, hit that gong. It is time for us to go around and give our scores out of a 10, along with a justification. We are gonna start in Germany with Sinan Sadula. Also, Leute, as I said, I'm not sure if I like the song or not, but I think I like it. So I'm giving it six out of 10. Over to the USA, Suzanne. I am giving amen. Are you ready? Does everyone have their abacus? Are we good to go? I am going, and I may inevitably rate this higher later. I am going with an 8.5. Wow. Yes. <laughs> it's a little bit lower. It gets a 4.5 for me. A little bit lower. <laughs> That's half, half of it. Half of it. Oh. Now listen, I as as we've talked about, I've really grown to like the message of the song, and I think that's embedded firmly in there. It's just not. It, it needs to come to the surface. It needs to grab me instantly, <laughs> so I know what this song is about because it's just not doing it at the moment would be higher if I'd have known all that kind of stuff. But 
at your vision we're talking first impressions doesn't quite make it on me unfortunately so look we had to lock our scores in many weeks ago our accounting firm would not allow us to change our scores for whatever reason looking at this score sheet my score is far too low this score does not reflect my feelings however Sorry. i am locked and i have to tell you what i gave this several weeks ago and at the time of the wee wee jury rankings and reviews i gave this a six if i could do it again and change my score which i cannot because of our accounting firm ernst and young i would give this a nine i wow. would give this a nine but because of rules and regulations it's a six forgive me <laughs> But look, it is what it is, amen. I wish him nothing but the best. We, of course, are not the only Wee bloggers. There are dozens of us all over the world, and they have also given their scores from their homes in Australia, in Sweden, in Spain, in Italy, you name it. And the overall global average is... Oh, hell no. 4.89. Yeah, wow. 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 I called it. I called it. I cannot believe this clownery. 4.89. <laughs> Just so you guys know, the other Amen in Slovenia got a 4.84. So I really think that psychologically something happened and people were like, if it's called Amen, it's getting a bad score. Please, I think this is far too low. I think all of that was meant for Slovenia, not Austria. Ooh. So in the battle of Amens, you go Austria. Yeah. Sinan? I don't know. Don't ask me. <laughs> Oliver? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even, even though I gave it a low score, this is absolutely the better song. This is absolutely the better Amen of the two, 100%. And I'm, and this one doesn't feel preachy to me. But, you know, like I said, I don't think it's high impact enough. I, I'm just... The, the chorus, the chorus, Amen, Amen, is this what you wanted? Give me some variety. Just change it up a bit. The pain is so real, the emotion. This, to me, it's so mainstream, that so pain. emotive. Yeah, he looks great. He sings it great. He feels it. I just, I am so into this. I really, in any case, that's what we think. What do you think? Do you agree that a score of 4.89 is far too low? Do you think Vincent can make the final of Eurovision? And how high can he climb if he does? Let us know here on Weebly Vlogs. If you like this video, Please subscribe to our channel. We have so many things for you coming up. So excited. And you can follow us on socials at WeWeBlogs. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. You name it, we're there. Spotify. Oh, and what about Clubhouse? Yeah, um, we'll do something at some point. I, I only have two hands, so it's like, oh my god. In any case, we'll see you later. Bye! Bye. Bye.